If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, for the first 21 minutes, me, Adam, and Justin have some lovely conversation. We talk about James Brown, the sexiest man of all time. We talk about the true story behind the inspiration to the movie Rocky. By the way, Rocky, one of the greatest love stories ever told. <laughs> you say that. You forget that, Adam? Uh, yeah, uh, we talk about that. the local cast of characters that live and uh, walk around the Mind Pump studio here. They inspire me every day. In San Jose. There's some characters around here. They're pretty great. Uh, we also talk about wearing the same thing every day. It seems like brilliant people like Dr. Dre, Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> Armani, Steve Jobs, and Sal Stefano like to do this. Yeah. Uh, then I mentioned uh, Four Sigmatic, Raishi and Chaga. Uh, somebody asked us a question in this episode about feeling overwhelmed, and I do reference those products. You can get them at Four Sigmatic. That's F O U R S I G M A T I C dot com forward slash mind pump. And if you enter the code mind pump, you get 15% off. And then we get into the questions. The first question was What are some of our favorite strategies for dealing with being or feeling overwhelmed? That's a crappy feeling. Uh, then we talk about what the effects of digestive enzymes have on protein absorption. And muscle gain. Should you supplement with digestive enzymes or should you just chew your food like an adult? <laughs> then we talk about whether or not we believe resistance training is sufficient to provide you with all of the endurance training needs you would get from cardio. Like, do you even need to do cardio or is that enough? Then the final question what advice would we give to a very busy college student who just can't seem to find the time to work out and eat right? She's too busy with social media. <laughs> it's so dick, you can't say that. That's what we think. Uh, and finally, this month, our promotion is massive. Uh, pretty much enroll in anything, you'll get something for free. In this episode, we talk about Maps Anywhere. Uh, this is our Maps program that's programmed out expertly without any exercise equipment. So you can do the whole program without touching a dumbbell or a barbell. Um, and believe me, you can make this work out very hard with our uh, patent pending um, AMPS sessions that we put in them. It's a great workout. Enroll in that, you'll get MAPS Prime for free. In fact, if you enroll in any MAPS program, you'll get MAPS Prime for free. But if you enroll in the Super Bundle, which is one year's worth of exercise programming, we'll give you Prime Pro for free. Again, pretty much enroll in any program, and you'll get something for free this month only. Find out about all of it at mindpumpmedia.com. I want to get us pumped up real quick. Hold on. All right. Another all right. another good song here. Do something. Do- I want to get into it, man, you know. Mm, yeah. Like a sex machine, man. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Can I count it off? Bam, 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 bam. Get on up. Get up. Ah! Get on up. God ah! damn it. Let me like tell you something. Machine. Everybody, you know what? He's you, easily the easily ha! easily the sexiest man ever. Ha! Ever. <laughs> I'm not even look. I'm not even into that kind of shit. But I'll tell you what. This Are you dude. Serious? I this dude love walks into a room and women just it's just orgasms. Yeah. Just yeah, just everything comes off. That is just some testosterone right there. Right, right. They don't right. make anybody like that right, anymore. Right, right, dude. Right, right. Yeah, I love. Yeah. I saw like one of his last concerts too. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. God, I was up at the. Uh, did you really? Villa Montavo. Yeah. He just did this like, um, man. When was it? Was you like, saw him at Montavo too. Yeah, Montavo's super intimate. It was it was so rad. They, oh, wow. they did the whole thing with uh, you know taking his cape off and oh. like he was dancing and it was fucking. Do you epic. know how how I got introduced to James Brown? Hmm. Watching Rocky Four. That's the first time I was a kid. Oh yeah. And I watched Rocky oh, Four. Yeah. <laughs> Where he fights the Russian. Yeah, I think that's the first time I got introduced. And and really? that yeah. and there's that scene right where it's uh, the Russian who's <laughs> fighting uh, what's his name uh, Apollo Apollo Creed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Apollo's retired. And he comes, he's coming he back. Comes down. It's an exhibition exhibition fight, and freaking James Brown is singing. Yeah. You know. Do you guys uh, have you tell me you guys have seen the Netflix? Dude, he's one of my favorites. Tell me you have seen the Netflix ter- series or show on who the real Rocky is. Oh well, Marciano? I know who the real Rocky is, but I didn't see the show. Oh my God, the you- Brockton Bleeder. 
Y- dude, you need. No, I know I all about that it. story. You uh-huh. need to watch. It's a. That's Netflix. the story that motivated. It's a Netflix. Sly. It's a Netflix really? documentary. Fuck off. What's it called? You need to. Oh God, I gotta look this up oh, now. Oh man, I got. We Katrina and I will watch it. What a compelling story. We're watching story. it today. So We have to watch it today. Yeah, yeah. you have to watch it. The this. Brompton Bleeder was his nickname. And what do you, tell me what you know, because I want to know. So I can't, okay, for I whatever it was reason. Rocky Marciano. No, no, yeah, no, 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 no. No, like, so I can't, I'll, I'll remember his name in a second. It'll come up to me. But he, uh, Muhammad Ali. Oh my God, I want to watch it with you. Fought this guy and it was an exhibition fight. Uh-huh. So it was for fun or whatever. And this guy comes out and I don't remember what round it was in, the second round or one of the early rounds. He just catches Ali with a punch and knocks him on the ground. So after that, Ali was like, I'm going to punish this man. I'm going to put him out. Like, this guy's trying to embarrass me. Yeah. And he proceeds to put a beating down on this man for fucking like 12 rounds. Like, beats his ass. Yeah. But this guy won't go down. Yeah. He just takes, he just it. takes yeah. the beating. He, he went the, the distance with And the, the whole crowd is just falling in love with this guy who's taking this beating. And Muhammad Ali, afterwards when they interviewed him, he's like, I have never put a beating on a man like I put on that guy. And he would not go down, and he earned everybody's respect. Sylvester Stallone watched that fight mm. and turned, and it, it that is what inspired the story for Rocky, which, oh, by the shit. way, I didn't even know that's awesome. Great story. Sylvester Stallone, poor, has to sell his dog because he has no money. Literally sells butt kiss his dog in Rocky. That was his actual dog. Sells his dog and puts newspapers up on his windows in his little shitty apartment. Locks himself in there, and I think for three days didn't do anything but write Rocky, and then he finished it. And then, of course, he goes and sells, tries to sell the script, but the he had to, he made, he said, if you buy the script, I have to play Rocky. And everybody said, no, fuck you. Yeah. And he, but they offered him like, I don't remember, like $300,000, like a tremendous amount of money. And he said, no, I have to be, so he stuck to his guns. Mm. The rest is history. All it's a great story all the way around. Great story. Well, they get into that and they kind of tell it from a different angle right there. But oh my god, you gotta watch! I'm trying to find the name right now. It was the Bronxton Brawler, right? Isn't that what it was? No, the Bleeder. Bleeder. They Bronx. called him the Bleeder because yeah. <laughs> every fight he got into, he get, got all but he wouldn't. Up. Yeah, so, he wouldn't get. So it was it was the Bronxton Bleeder, something like that. Bronxton or Blo- Bronxton. Brockton? Bronxton. Isn't that it's that's uh, from where he's at? Name? Bronxton, right? And, then, and that I don't know what his name was. The Bro- God, maybe I'm wrong. Mm. Maybe no, no, I'm wrong. No, no, you're close to. I know it, you're close. It was something like that, right? I'm, I'm gonna find it, man. I, I, you know, we'll get it in the show notes. So yeah. I will, I will, because I'm, I'm finding it right now. Because Chuck Wepner, <coughs> yes, Chuck Wepner, that's yep. the guy. But now look up the Netflix. 1975 series. was the fight, um, and uh, he fell seconds short of the 15 rounds. He went almost 15 rounds with the one of the greatest boxers. Of all time. Okay, give me his, spell his last name. Uh, W-E-P-N-E-R. P-N-E-R? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to find it right now for everybody. Fucking great Peen. story, dude. I, I recommend uh, people read up on that on that whole story of how Rocky was- No, watch it. You don't have to read. Just go read. Watch it. The series has done so well. The series has done so well. It will break your heart, though. Mm. It'll break your mm. freaking heart. Yeah. I don't remember what is the. Oh, no. Sorry. The Bayon Bleeder. The Bayon Bleeder. Bayon Bleeder. Yeah, B-A-Y-O-N-N-E Bleeder. I'll be watching this. How how fucked up is that? That's your nickname. Yeah. yeah. You know? And in this corner. (laughs) So tough. Iron Mike Tyson. And in this corner, (laughs) you know, concussion. The the menstruator. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, oh, man. Yeah. Kirk (laughs) concussion. How did I get that nickname? Smith, you know. Yeah. Gets knocked out easily. The eye oozer. Why? Shit. I don't know why. Glass Jaw Joe. Glass Jaw. Dang. Oh, man. So you guys want to hear some some science? I'm about about to- Science and technology with Sal DiStefano. It's fun. You'll see. So trip off this. When you guys eat asparagus- which I know you guys do because it's you good for you. You can smell it in your pee. Because it's good for you. It's got fiber. It's sure. green. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adam likes it because it's in the shape of a penis, kind of. He likes yeah. those phallic symbols. Yes. What happens right after when you go urinate? Smells. You smell it, right? Yeah. So trip off this. I thought, now some people, they don't smell, the, you know, they don't have that smell. And I thought it was because genetically speaking, some people just don't have produce chemistry. They don't produce the whatever the chemical agent is. that probably pairs that, with that that makes it smell that. And way, the right? smell, I believe, the name is of the it thing, an ammonia uh, kind of smell. No, it's actually called like asparagosalis or something. It's like named after asparagus. Oh my god! It's some compound that makes your pee smell. 
But tri- so here's what tripped me out. It's not just that. They think that there may be a genetic variant where people, their pee still smells. They just can't smell it. <laughs> so it's not that their pee doesn't <laughs> smell. They just don't smell it. It's that they maybe can't That's... smell it. There was actually a study. Well, done well, 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 back up here. So you mean to tell me that there... This is actually a little bit of a debate. I've feel... been reading up on this because... I was at a party. So that the idea is that your pee smells all the time, but because you had the asparagus, something in the asparagus allows you to smell it now? No, 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 no. No. Everybody, some people can't smell that it smells. Yeah, so right? so whatever's in your pee that makes it. Smell oh, in other words, prefer- everybody's pee smells. Everybody have, knows it, stinks. but some people don't. Th- some yeah. people just can't smell it. And then there's another theory, and they've done studies on this, which is funny. That some people's pee maybe not smell. Why does that require a study? I feel like all I need is someone like you to deny that your pee doesn't smell like and asparagus, then smell and then I come smell your pee when you're peeing. <laughs> you're like, no, you're wrong. No, you're yeah. wrong. Yeah. Study science can- over. Yeah. 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 Does your guys's pee smell when you eat asparagus? Yes. Yeah. Everybody. I, I haven't met of anybody it does. whose pee doesn't smell. I feel like the same study could apply to these people with bad breath that like like talk to you and they don't realize it. And you're like, listen, you fucking stink. I, I can. Can you ever smell your own breath though? Yes. Yeah. Sometimes Absolutely. you can smell your own breath. I can haven't, taste. Have you ever <sighs> to your hand? That doesn't work. Oh my god, it works. Does it really? Yes. Because no. then you smell. You just smell your hand. Yeah. You check yourself. What if you wash your hands and it smells like uh, you know? Like well, yeah, smell your hand. Maybe fr- you're just used to your own brand. Smell your yeah. hand first. Make sure it doesn't smell like shit, and then blow in it. Because <laughs> <laughs> if your hand smells like dog shit, and then you blow it in your hand, uh, you will smell dog shit. I love shit. telling people their hand smells, and then I smack them. Yeah. Because it's like right here. You're just a mean fucking yeah, You're just a guy. child, dude. You're <laughs> just a fucking child. He's yeah. a big bully yeah. all the time. I can't help it. Who does that? Huh? Well, you're kind you're of a bully, bad. too. You're not as bad as Justin. Yeah. You're like different levels of bullying. I'm not a bully. Uh, I say what's on my mind. You you mm. yanking me with the band until I fell. Uh, yeah. That was funny. Is a, uh, is, it that was says funny. you are a bully. That was real funny. <laughs> it was actually hilarious. Yeah. I it think was funny. I got to ask Taylor. And then that night, I lit a couple like uh, voodoo calendar uh, can- candles, excuse me, to get some karma to come back and then Voodoo it's weird doll. that you fell off the ca- the ladder the other day <laughs> yeah. wow i feel wow. like i know i keep saying that he's gonna think i pushed him off <laughs> do you see uh taylor starting to make a series on the mind pump media instagram of like the people that come in and do their makeup and stuff on the the mirror windows oh uh, yeah because a lot a lot of times when he's working people yes. are coming over and somebody did you see the one he did yesterday? i'm waiting for someone to like like scratch their junk or something in front of because we have i know the listeners don't know our facility our media facility uh is on it's like a storefront on a very busy part of san jose and we didn't plan it that way because we're not a public we don't there's nobody's coming in off the streets uh to come into our business it's all just for media that's the reason why we put mirror tent windows and so but with the space was perfect so we're like fuck it let's get it and then we put mirror tint because we don't want people to know that we're here yeah you know we're what i mean people like picking their nose and Scratching themselves and doing yeah. all kinds of weird yeah, stuff. It's like, come on, you well, don't think somebody's on the you, other side. Of have this? you guys seen the the? the we have like there's like um, uh, characters that I see every single day mm-hmm. that are around here. Yeah. So I'll name one. Let's see if you guys can name some others. Okay. There's the old dude that rides his bike with the worst posture I've ever seen in my entire oh, life. Yeah. Have you seen him? Yeah. Mm-mm. You yeah. haven't seen him? He's mm-hmm. he's like ready to like snap in half. He's if so he, bent over. He's. At, he's at least, I'm not exaggerating, 175 years old. He's yeah. super old. <laughs> That's what his posture says. Super old. He's right now, he's probably closer to like 90. He's a very old guy, so you know, kudos to him for being active. He rides a bike back and forth at least twice every day, mm-hmm. and he's extremely hunched over on his bike, and he just, he just cruises yeah. by at a decent speed and then there's my favorite which is the, your guy? the homeless guy with, <laughs> with our zero fuck shirt yeah. he found in the trash <laughs> i just love it so much there's, it's, <laughs> just like, it's so appropriate this you know kid. what i mean it's like walking around zero fucks he's actually uh, wearing a my pub shirt yes where'd he get it yeah, he like we threw out a bunch of shit did we yes like oh we no were trying to clean the closet <laughs> and so i think he just like found it in the dumpster. Oh, that's how he got it. I was wondering. I yeah, thought maybe that's, that's my theory. Why is there a? Well, shirt? I thought maybe Goodwill or something like that. Had, I mean, come on, it's it's yeah, a shirt yeah. we've had around for a couple of years. I mean, they could have pulled. I've done a couple there, Goodwill but, runs already. I'm sure uh, there's some zero may, fuck shirts in there. Maybe you know, but like more than likely, I think he went to our dumpster because yeah. he's local. Oh, yeah. that makes way more sense he's a now. Guy. Yeah. Is even, he the same guy that chills on the on the lawn over uh, at the church? Maybe they man. When we went over there to shoot a couple videos for Axon and. 
remember <laughs> they got so mad at me. Like I was like the homeless dudes? interrupting their like environment, you know? Yeah. They got like really mad. They've got, it's, it's actually, I almost got, I, I told you guys a story. I almost got in a freaking rumble. And when I say rumble, I mean yeah. like there was one homeless dude that I had to take his boxed wine to get him to move. Cause he was, we're not right, moving. He was like sitting alone. on your backpack, right? Yeah. Or on our backs. The- but then he like, uh, he like went and called the, the, ar- the artillery. Like he, like all of a sudden he comes back and oh, there's yeah, like, his homies come by. There's his, a good, like yeah. seven homeless dudes. And I didn't feel threatened because they're all, you know, th- you know, obviously they're all malnourished, <laughs> but yeah. they, you know, uh, you don't want to tussle with a, no, you know what I mean? Yeah, you don't you know, we were, we were, we were debating who's more of a good prick, you or I. And I feel like, you, you just, take you just stepped up. Yeah. You've been in a fight or almost in a fight with two homeless people. Yeah. I've never fought any homeless people, bro. That's fucked yeah. up. I, I didn't yeah. get in a fight, it's but I, I had yeah. to defend. I mean, I, I think that pushes myself. you not, over not as the bigger PR. dick. Yeah. I wasn't picking a fight, dude. I was literally <laughs> defending. Who fights a homeless guy? Listen, I, I'm giving them shirts. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, Zero fucks. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else you guys recognize from the neighborhood that you see? I just see uh, lots of uh, CrossFitters running around in circles, carrying stuff over their head with tall socks. Yeah. That's that's a lot of that. That's a lot of that. That's because we got the Hair stylist yeah. too. That, that, those are the ones that come and do their makeup and the hair stuff. Like this guy. Oh, because there's a salon. There's above a salon us. above us. So. Oh, that makes more sense. Oh now. yeah, I forget yeah, that we have an upstairs. That he's real. You know, making sure like every little detail on his face is uh, the uh, appropriate. The feminine Asian a guy. A bit. Yeah. That's okay. There's a, there's a regular yeah. guy. There's a, like he's this, a regular. I haven't a, seen him. There's a Asian guy that's probably in his early twenties and he has. He really takes care of himself. He's got. Uh, feminine uh, mannerisms mm-hmm. and he checks his hair and his face every day in the, in there yeah. in our mirror yeah. in our windows yeah oh shit i haven't seen him mm-hmm. yeah he's one of my favorites cuz he gets really expressive we've got a very eclectic neighborhood cuz then you've got the, down the street the new re- the restaurant that we go all the time luna mm-hmm. uh they're great they've got their their regular characters then the owner over there very very pretty older woman um, she might Taylor be yeah, might be in love with her. Might be know. trying to talk to our Maybe. our <laughs> you know, our marketing dude. Might you uh, know have a thing. We could totally put him on there. blast because he never listens. I know. Yeah. I know. He <laughs> that's, hey, hey Taylor, that that's purpose. what you get for not fucking listening. To our hey, bro, you want to yeah. be part of this company? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I'll just, let me just hey, let me just give you some advice, bro. Yeah. She'll wreck you. Okay? Yeah. You be careful. She's got, she's got Pull that long wisdom on you. And then there's grab the, him by his man bun. <laughs> She'll grab you by your Drag man bun, Drag him by the son. man bun. Yeah. Drag <laughs> him across the floor. After she's done, give him a little bottle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Braid it. Did yeah. you see the picture that Justin did of Taylor? Because I, I told him I when he was shooting what a couple of days ago, he had that he had a big beanie on and he had the he had the uh, yeah. capri pants on with the and then the white kind of shirt yeah like just a Haynes plain white shirt or whatever super Hollywood guy yeah I was like oh god look at look how artistic he looks today get a picture just took a picture of him and then he put him (laughs) holding a uh, bro you should connect superimpose the most perfect little like it looks like he was holding it I bet you most people thought he was holding that it looks like he's holding it you need to connect him with your your boy uh, Wally the two of them could trade fashion right secrets (laughs) marriage made in heaven right there yeah you can start wearing yeah uh, you wear some skirts and some you know, other bullshit. That's a thing, I guess, huh? Or is it just Wally that wears it? It's not script? a thing. It's not. <laughs> just it's, it's definitely angry. not a thing. Well, 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 de- well what is a thing? Is we are, we are, as in the three of us, are out of style and everything. <laughs> we are out of style, yeah. I'm in classic hence, style mode, bro. Hence the, the fucking first t-shirt, zero fucks. So, <laughs> yeah, so what I'm doing now is I'm trying to- I was aggressive. I have a new, I have a new style strategy. Hmm. I'm gonna. Oh show. my god! I want to hear this. Yes, please. Well, let me uh, let me t- let me tell you guys. I can't wait. I, first of all, I'm fit and healthy, so I plan on living at least till 80. Hopefully, I can live till 80. I'm gonna wear the same shit until then. At some point, mm. it's gonna be in style. So there will be a period of time when I'm in style. There is a good chance. That's of that, my actually. gamble. There is a good chance of that. It would yeah. suck if the it numbers never did, will though. go in your direction. You know how sure. mad I'll be when I'm 80? And I'll yeah, be but like, the problem fuck, is, this never guys like style. you, guys like you, what ends up happening is you get older. Your memory, right? You start to get these gaps where then you start blending something that was cool in the 80s, something that was cool in the 90s, and then you're yeah, so you're all over the place. Yeah, your shit might come around, but only half your outfits put together yeah. because it's like okay, well, because it still has to be organized yeah, to that exactly. one style, yeah, and you yeah, don't even yes. have that. Yes. Yeah. It's like, it's like this, you're you like, look like the the, 80, the 80s raped yeah. the 90s Whoa. and then shit wow. out the, yeah. the 2000s like oh that's God. <laughs> raped and shit like we put that together it wasn't even consensual yeah. it was <laughs> that's horrible yeah it was like well a, I think so when I watched bad nightmare when I watched that series uh the the fuck I can't remember the name of the one with Dr Dre on Netflix the uh, Untouchable Defiant ones Defiant ones thank you yeah. 
Untouchables. Did you guys know Dr. Dre? Well, you watched it. Dr. Yeah. Dre, he wears the same thing every day. Same shirt. <laughs> I mean, he wears same the same pants. shoes, but he, no, no, no. Okay, he said on it. Thing. Hold okay. on, okay. hold on. No. He said on the fucking I, I documentary. Too. Okay, I wear the same thing every day. That's what I'm gonna do. This I want to like for the most part. I wear. I'm gonna the get same a, stuff. That's all I want to do. I want to wear one fucking same pair of jeans that look cool, but I'll own like 15 of them. Same shirt, same shoes. Mm. Looks cool. Just wear them every fucking day. Don't have to worry about anything. And you know what? That's going to okay. work if you're Dr. Dre or if you're Steve Jobs. Well, well and it can work. Oh, yeah. Steve Jobs. Okay. Too. And, it's and all it, these smart people. And it can, <laughs> dude, don't let him fool you either. Now, if you looked no, at he's his shoes, his socks, yeah. the pants he's wearing, the belt he's got with it, like that, he's got the whole ensemble, though. Don't yeah, just because yeah. it's he all black. figured it out. So go ahead, bro. Yeah. Be, it's easy to pick all one color. You can do that, but he's still in style. Like, yeah, <laughs> still, yeah. don't, don't let him fool you. There's still thought put into the suit, the shoes, the socks. The jeans, like I guarantee. Don't think for a second the fucking first million I make, I'm literally gonna, I'm gonna hire a stylist and be like, I want one outfit. Your yeah. wardrobe is yeah. gonna be all the same. That shit. I can wear all. The I time. guarantee that. that Imagine that if that you black, wake up, that you black t-shirt, that black t-shirt, pants, shoes, that get up he's wearing. I guarantee Makes from sense. everything from his. His uh, wrist game, his shirt. That's a twenty thousand to forty thousand dollar ensemble. Yeah, between the clothes, the watch, every is all his all his whole ensemble is twenty. So there's nothing yeah. simple yeah. about that all black well, outfit. I'm all for that. <laughs> like, yeah, you just got to figure out what that it, like that one like superpower you know like, you do? look is. Right. Wow. You know, you haven't figured it out yet. God, there's all these. Look, I just googled it, and it's like, here's an article: the men powerful enough to wear the same thing every day. See, it's like. Ice Cube wears the same fucking thing every day. Mark Zuckerberg wears the same shit every come day. Come on, come on. Zuckerberg? You're going to try to look like Zuckerberg? Armani wears the same thing every day? Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm reading the list of people. It probably cost like 50 who, grand. What's it look like, though? Yeah. I don't give a fuck what it looks like. It's the same thing. <laughs> well, if it's all in stuff. No, no, you have to give a fuck what it looks like. Okay, here's what he wears. Here's what Armani. Is anybody going to argue with me right now that Armani doesn't know what the fuck he's doing? What's, anybody? Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's what I thought. Navy blue. Silk T-shirt, cashmere sweater, navy cashmere blue. Sweater. I don't give a fuck, bro. Cashmere. Hold on, mm. navy blue drawstring pants and white sneakers. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Every day, every day. That's what I'm gonna and do. And he goes swimming one. in that. I'm yeah. gonna hire a stylist to do a one all, outfit. All, <laughs> all brought to you by Armani. Yeah. So <laughs> that's gonna be. A, so it's like half branding here. I kind of yeah. do wear the same thing every day, though. Let's be honest. I'm almost there. Close. Mm. I'm halfway there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you look sharp. Right. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. I think you look sharp. Thank you. Yeah. Doug, bring on the sharp bird, please. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health the performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. All right, our first question is from Larry Jansen. What are your favorite strategies for dealing with being overwhelmed, both physically and in business life? <laughs> overwhelmed, like you're taking too much on. You just feel like just, there's just too, <sighs> too much shit going on. Yeah. Um, you know what's funny about this is every single time I've been in a situation like this, because it's happened to me uh, in quite a bit in the you know recent past, because I've dealt with um, a divorce, moving to a new place, uh, organizing kids schedule building a business and it's just like you feel like you can't you, just too much shit i can't handle everything and then what happens is you feel like shutting down like i'm just not doing anything and uh and he, this sounds very simple but no joke it's it works you just start writing a list it's actually sounds stupid and i was super reluctant to do it because it sounds so simple but when I did it, when I wrote a list out of the important things I need to do mm -hmm. and then just went down the list, check by check. You get a feeling of like relaxation almost because that's you all it simplified is. it. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The feeling of being overwhelmed many times just comes from the sense of being unorganized. Mm. It's not necessarily that there's, yes, you have a lot to do, but the fact that you don't know what to do first and how to do it is what gives you that overwhelmed well, feeling. Well, I think you guys also brought up uh, minimalist, the minimalism like kind of documentary a long time ago. And uh, me and my wife actually watched that a couple of weeks ago. And, and it really did sort of resonate and like strike a chord with me as far as like um, just the organization of my house, the organization of my clothes, um, you know, the, the, the certain things that I'm into and then, and then really trying to hone in on, you know, what, what its purpose is in, in my everyday 
uh, process because if there's too many things and I just even even visually if I'm seeing too many things that are like bring this kind of like chaotic feeling um, you know why why like why not just get rid of it you know just simplify simplify everything and then once I started doing that because I mean I was doing <clears throat> You know, I was trying to launch this product. I was trying to, you know, try and do all this stuff for, for mind pumping the business and, and then, you know, the kids and schedule and, and, and soccer and like taking all these things on. And it's just like, man, yeah, you can, you just feel that. You feel all that just, just slowly creep up, creep up. And, and so, yeah, just taking massive action to, um, you know, simplify things and prioritize things for sure. Mm-hmm. I, uh, <clears throat> I smoke a joint and go to the movies. There you go. <laughs> so, and, you he know, had a best method. advice. He had a method. Well, let's let's un, let's unpack that, right? I think yeah. you're I think uh, you're both right. I think that uh, the feeling of being overwhelmed most times is just your perception, right? It's that you've got so much on your mind, or you've got this huge project that just feels overwhelming, and that's that's your perception of it. Is it really? Is it the end of life? Is it a big? And so, so it's we, a state change. You you laugh and you say that, but I, I'm dead serious. Like this is a something <clears throat> that happens in my life on a fairly regular basis. So I'm not smoking, getting high, and going to the movies every day, obviously. Uh, but I mean, a true feeling of overwhelm, which hundred percent I can relate to this feeling. And I think everybody in this room has felt that before. If you're a grinder or go getter, like somebody who's after doing a lot on in your life, like it's, it's inevitable. <clears throat> this feeling will probably happen. But when it does, I, I know that that's because I'm so attached to whatever it is that I'm hyper-focused on. That's causing this feeling of being overwhelmed. And so literally I'll be overwhelmed with work. I'll have all this stress that's going on. If I get it, if it gets to that point where I actually think it's overwhelming and I feel that, which is rare, but does happen, uh, I would say probably four to six times a year for me. And when that happens, I literally stop in my day. It could be a Tuesday at noon and I will literally stop working, stop whatever is making me feel overwhelmed. I'll go smoke a joint. I'll go watch a movie all by myself at the theater. And what that is, if you unpack it and you really think about why that's like magical for me, is it it allows me to detach from this thing that is causing this or making me feel overwhelmed and it gives me a new perspective on things. And I love to watch the movie. So maybe it's not a movie for you and maybe you don't smoke weed. So don't, I'm not advocating smoking weed. Those two things allow me to detach from everything else. I like to be entertained by something that doesn't make me have to think all the time where I'm constantly reading. I'm constantly watching documentaries. I'm constantly doing business stuff. I'm, I'm constantly grinding and working so watching a mindless comedy or a movie that doesn't make my brain turn a million miles an hour causes me to really detach from that. And it gives me perspective on other things. And I, and I normally walk out of the movie laughing and enjoying and realizing, oh my God, I just had two hours of not thinking about that stuff. It's really not that big of a deal. I'm allowing this thing to make me feel overwhelmed. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Yes. And I mean, the thing you want to un- consider with the feeling of being overwhelmed is that it is a uh, a symptom of anxiety. Mm-hmm. It's a feeling. So things that can reduce anxiety can help quite a bit with the feeling of being overwhelmed. Like Adam's saying, like for him, he found something that works that gets him to feel, uh, you know, reduce that sense of anxiety. And then, uh, because if you've ever suffered from any type of anxiety, which if you're human, you have, everybody has, you know that you're far less effective. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you have 15 things you need to do today, but you feel anxious about it, which translates into feeling overwhelmed, you become very uh, inefficient at doing those things and you can't uh, get anything done. You tend to freeze up. Um, you tend to not do anything. And then you go to the next day and out piles, on, piles yeah. onto the next day. Cool. So uh, techniques to reduce anxiety... Um, are definitely a good part of the process. Something I've recently been using quite a bit is uh, the mushroom uh, raishi. Raishi uh, does produce a calming effect in the body, both acutely and chronically. In other words, if you use it on a regular basis, there seems to be this cumulative effect where it just starts to work better and better. But you also get a cum- you also get an acute effect. If you were to take raishi mushroom um, now and you're feeling anxious, you're likely to feel uh, a little bit of uh, uh, you know relief. Um, passion flower is something else that you can use. Uh, chaga is another mushroom that I've used uh, or recommended now to clients. We have mm-hmm. a good sp- sponsorship with Four Sigmatic now, so now I'm recommending more of those. 
mainly because I see how effective they are and I'm familiar with the science. But yeah, my <laughs> wife's been using the reishi, and, and, she, and yeah, and that's been helping because you know, we've both kind of gone through these spells together of you know like going through this anxiety and like it it got to a point where it became really physical. You know, and like I actually went to the hospital. Like she like had uh, you know a physical reaction. And, uh, you know, this is something that uh, we re- quickly realized, like, we were just letting this happen based off of, like, our day-to-day, like, habits. And we were just taking everything on, mm-hmm. taking all this kind of stress on. And, um, you know, so she's been working with that. I've been working with, um, you know, my posture and the way that um, I'm just focused more on breathing and just opening myself. So I've noticed, you know, with just the way that you carry yourself, um a lot of times, even with the posture, if you're not getting a nice deep breath throughout your day, I mean, you just, I mean, that compiles and in, in over the next day and the next day, all of a sudden now I'm like, I'm really like, you know, tensing up and I'm, and I'm keeping a lot of this, this needless uh, uh, stress and, and it's turning into anxiety, which bleeds into like, uh, like the overwhelmed feeling like all of a sudden now, like all these things matter so much and I'm taking on this uh, you know, per, like this feeling towards it. And, and I like what you said about the minimalist attitude. Like there's, we, we do, there's so much shit that we do and have that contributes to our anxiety that we don't need to have. It is, a, it is, you know, how wonderful of a feeling it is to come to terms with the fact that you don't need a lot of shit mm-hmm. and you end up not getting a lot of shit. And now you're just like, well, I feel like so much better. I realized that I didn't need that stuff. I don't ha- I have less clutter, less things to worry about. Things are more simple And I'm focusing on the things that are important. Um, But at the end of the day, um, there may be some root causes to this feeling of anxiety and overwhelm. And and that's just that you're fucking busy. There's a lot of shit going on. The organizing uh, tasks and, you know, putting them in order uh, of, you know, priority and when to finish them and how to do them is a fantastic method of uh, making yourself more efficient. You go to any company, any business... And this is the one of the basic things that they do. You can't, you know, you can't just go somewhere and say, "Okay, here's what we're going to accomplish." Do you think that could be a bad thing too, though? Kind of like tracking your food with, with like what we talk about. Like, you know, there's pluses and minuses to that, right? Do you think that becoming over organized? And oh yeah, it's so called hum- OCD, right? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. <clears throat> and I think there's, I think you have to, I think you have to uh, preface that a bit or give that warning with that is that, you know, hey, getting more organized can help this situation, but it could also uh, um, make it worse. Yeah, you yeah. could, you could, if you, I mean, you could sit there and become OCD sure. about everything to the point where then that creates right anxiety for you. Absolutely, but like you know, you know, when I have my kids, like I, I know what time I wake up. I know the order of things that I do in the morning so that they have their lunch ready, so that I can check their homework, so I have time to do my meditation, my workout. Then I know what time I wake them up, walk them to school, and it's just the structure that I create that. It alleviates a lot of that sense of anxiety and overwhelmment in the morning because I know the times I'm going to accomplish these different things and what I'm going to do. And it's like no problem. Like everything's thought out and and processed. And so it it really does uh, make a big difference. The hard thing is when you're in this state of mind, when you're sitting there feeling like, fuck, I can't finish everything. There's too much stuff to do. And someone comes to you and says, hey, make a list. Like you want to punch them in the face. Like that was my, that was my response. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't want to do that. And it's like, you have to understand that your reluctance to do that is just a reflection of your anxiety. Literally just relax with that whole, like, I don't want to make a list and just write a list. Cause almost like you don't want to see what's on the list. I know that's how I feel. Like I don't want to write a list because then I got to look at all the shit that I got to do. It's almost like I'm trying to run away from it, which you can't. So, you know, just calm yourself down write that thing out, write that list out, start knocking things off your list. After about two or three of them, man, you'll feel so much better. Right is right. Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com, put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout. If you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash Nature Bite, put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. Next up is Ethan Hale, 33. What's the effect of digestive enzymes on protein absorption and muscle gain? You pick this one, Adam. Yeah, yeah. The more the more protein that you eat, the the more you're going to need. Yeah. That's that's something that when you have somebody who's oh, like that. This is why 
you know, we talk about uh, protein absorption with, you know, the oversaturating by consuming 200, 300, 400 grams of protein. No one really takes into account too, like the, the digestive enzymes play a factor in this and that that's an important uh, part of it. And if you're consuming so much meat, so much protein, and you're not getting enough foods that have enough digestive enzymes, you're also hindering that whole process too. And nobody really talks about this. No, you are. Uh, and the one single thing you can do to optimize your digestive enzymes more than anything else naturally is to thoroughly chew your food. That, that right there will signal your, first of all, there's enzymes in your saliva, which start to break down food. People don't realize uh, that chewing your food is digesting your food. You have started the digestive process. If you don't chew your food properly, you're skipping a step. Hmm. It would be like taking my food and, and skipping the stomach part and just going straight to Which my- Which I don't think I would talk about this as much as I, I would now that we've experienced this personally. It's a fucking game changer. It, it, it was something that I, I never had thought ever to even try. Like, I'm going to try and eat a meal. Uh, in fact, I had a, um, a cousin of mine who's up in Seattle who uh, messaged me that that episode where we talked about that was like a game changer for her. She's like, I have, I've never tried to eat food before without fluid. Like, it's just, it's so in our culture. Yeah. It's so in our culture to, to the point where how many times have you been pissed off at a restaurant because someone hasn't refilled your fucking soda or your drink fast enough? Isn't that so crazy how the most simple things like that and like fasting and like, you know, just stepping away from food for a minute, it's like, it just seems like, no, that's too obvious. You know, like the, these are just small things, but they like have such massive impact when you implement them day after day. Well, dude, it's it's crazy. And and I don't I don't eat every meal, just so you know, going forward. I don't eat every meal with no fluid. It's just I did that. So I it gave me a new perspective of how I was consuming my food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was what that was the takeaway for me. And so I think that is what I've been trying to teach and tell people. I'm not saying like I don't tell people like, hey, don't ever have fluids and eh, whatever. You know, what I'm saying when you're when you're eating food, I say try and eat a meal without it and pay attention to the way you chew. Yeah, it's interesting. The yeah, because the, the I mean, the fast food culture. I mean, we, we've been like trying to engineer this this process to speed up and get back to work. You know, like everybody has this like massive hustle in their mentality with like their lunch breaks and all these kinds of things. And they're just, you know, scarfing it in as quick as possible. It's a very, it's a very, when you really think about it, it is a very interesting, strange, uh, you know, poor connection uh, to food and eating. And uh, let me explain. If I, you know, let's say you're looking at a burger and you're like, fuck, I want to eat that burger so bad. It looks so delicious. And I say, hey, let me blend that burger up and inject it directly into your stomach so you can have it. Would you want to do that? No, because you didn't experience it, right? It's in your belly, but you didn't get to chew it and experience it. And yet... You taste it for like a second. And yet, what do people do when they eat something they really want to eat? They scarf it the fuck down. Like all they're trying to do is get it in their stomach as fast as possible. That is not a natural uh, thing that we're doing. That is something that is learned and taught. It's like a compulsion. It's a compulsion. Because honestly, if you really want to enjoy your food... You chew it and you taste it because that's the part that you enjoy. It's not right. about getting it in your stomach as don't quick as you, possible. Sal, don't you yeah. take a, a digestive enzyme? No, I only date. So I have uh, digestive enzymes that I will take with me on trips when I'm eating um, foods that contain gluten mm. or some dairy, like lactase, for example. Lactase is the enzyme that breaks down lactose uh, in, in dairy. And I am not only am I in, uh, do I have an issue with milk proteins. But I also don't break down lacto- uh, lactose very well. So I'll take that. Um, and some of the enzymes in there will help uh, a little bit with gluten, which I tend to have a little bit of an issue with. Although these days it seems like I can eat gluten, um, you know, a couple times a week and not have a problem because I've done. So this is why I wanted to bring this question up, too, because I knew that you did use that. And I do know that as far as supplementing with digestive enzymes, it typically is most beneficial for people that have like irritable bowel syndrome or have, if you have tummy issues if, like you. If you have gut issues, if you have acid reflux, by the way, acid reflux and GERD and all that, it's not the result of too much acid. It's the result of having too little acid uh, in your stomach. And, uh, you're as a, and you're also probably deficient or not producing enough enzymes. Again, if you look at studies, even people with heartburn um, aside from eliminating certain foods that are triggers, chewing your food thoroughly solves that problem for a fucking big chunk of people uh, with those problems. Yeah, Same thing with preaching to the choir. Over yeah, there. Um, and you know what's funny talking about that? Like, 
if you had told me five years ago to do that, I would have said, no, it's not possible because then I'll choke on my food because I have this one big tonsil. Mm -hmm. That's bullshit. I don't do it anymore. I don't need fluid and I just chew it. So funny. It's such an argument I used to use because I totally had a problem like choking like and I didn't realize that like it was my (laughs) it was it was the amount of like I just wouldn't chew enough. Like I I would would just eat and then just eat like big chunks and just swallow it and then we'll try and wash it down. And the process was all about trying to like wash it down and pack it down in there. Yeah. Well, you think about all of us went through that at one point. We were all trying to gain weight to get build, build big, right? Yeah, that was the process, right? And like when you think, I I can recall many times shoveling shakes down and, you know, I remember like having a, you know, 800 calorie protein shake while I had my meal and I would take a bite and wash it down. Yep. with the shake and like yep. literally just, just swallow it all not even yeah. really chew any of it I know <laughs> so think about so what you're ridiculous you're, right right so it does it's so, stick with but you. I know I know there's got to be younger guys and 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 maybe even girls that are trying to build and build and, and add calories to their diet I and, would say unless you're on the extreme ends of the spe- spectrum I, I, even then I don't know if it's necessarily going to give you a benefit to supplement with uh, digestive enzymes see here's the thing with digestive enzymes we know what they do, right? Uh, they break down protein into amino acids so your body can now utilize the protein, whatever. So supplement companies take a, a, this next step and say, oh, this is going to make you utilize more yeah, protein more effectively, more, more efficiently. So you could shovel more protein. For in. the most part, <clears throat> unless, again, you have issues with your, with your gut, especially if you have bad issues like Crohn's disease um, uh, or you've been diagnosed with really bad acid reflux, you're producing all the enzymes you need. Just eat properly and chew your food well, and you're going to have them all. Well, and most don't. Most, Liver disease is another one. <clears throat> most protein shakes and some of that ain't put digestive enzymes. Because it in sounds there. cool, right? No, no, no. I mean, but I mean, like you're you're already getting what you need from probably the shakes and bars and well, the things. Well, what makes me laugh about that is you are when you're. That's probably the the a shake is probably what you would need the least amount of digestive enzymes considering that's already it's so pretty easy much a process yeah, it's yeah. already <laughs> it's, it's in, fluid yeah. it's already chewed the fuck up know, so they chewed it for you they chewed the yeah. hell out of it so um i mean that all uh, liver disease i think people with liver disease uh, age related uh, deficiencies in uh, digestive enzymes like those people might benefit but otherwise i think it's a, well it's i will time. i will say though i've had clients that i think are on the like kind of like you're in where i've like just looked at their diet and looked at what kind of foods they were getting and they just weren't getting a lot of foods that were that were rich in digestive enzyme like bell peppers and different mm-hmm. fruits and things like that that they never really got that in their rotation and yet they their stomach always felt backed up or weird and by me helping them just adding those foods into their diet they felt relief there so i do think if you're somebody uh, i don't think there's a need to supplement for it unless you have a specific issue like uh like irritable bowel syndrome or actually you know mm-hmm. you've been diagnosed with tummy issues like sal a- another one you could look at too for digestion is so a lot of people um, have issues with like us, like we're talking about digestive issues, and they have too little. Uh, they produce too little acid. One of the things you can do, you can actually buy um, uh, a, a HCL supplement, which is uh, I believe it's hydrochloric acid, if I'm not, uh, or no, beta, uh, betaine hydrochloride, um, which uh, will increase the amount of hydrochloric acid in your stomach. So for some people, they can do this when they eat a lot of meat, because you'll see people like people with uh, acid reflux. They'll say, "Oh my god, when I eat a lot of meat." I just get this really bad, you know, and it's because, again, they're not producing enough acid. They can supplement with this and it helps. Mike Salemi is the one that introduced me to this. And Paul Chex talks about this as well, that this supplement may help some people. So just a little side note. Hmm. Next up is Glenn SPT. Do you guys believe that resistance training is sufficient for maintaining cardiovascular health or that some sort of aerobic exercise should exist week to week? If so, how would you incorporate aerobic exercise into a MAPS program? I do with a good diet. Yeah, oh, totally. If you if you eat well and you train and you phase and you have like our phase four of fucking uh, MAPS screen in there occasionally, like you should. Like, I mean, yeah, I think you get. I There's think you plenty get, of cardio in that phase, right? You know what I love about resistance training is that you can you can, if you know how to use weights properly, you can do anything with them. Mm -hmm. This is not true with other methods of exercise. Like I'm not going to get good strength with cardiovascular activity. It's going to be very, it'll be very, very, I'll get a little bit, but very difficult. Yeah. A little bit like sprinting when you're running or something, but like even then, yeah, the gains are minimal. I could take someone and I could take two groups of people and one group say, you know, and, and the goal is to improve 
cardiovascular endurance for a particular sport or activity. And on the one one group over here, I say, okay, all you get to do is cardio. And then the other group, I said, all you get to do is use weights. And then I program the weights. I'll build way better cardio with the weight group by having them do things like circuits and you know high intensity interval type training. With actually, Super we just setting, yeah. actually me and Adam filmed a whole series. I, I, it's it's uh, getting uh, edited right now on YouTube uh, on that. So for cardiovascular health. You don't need to have extreme amounts of cardiovascular performance. For health, you just need to move. Right. Move every day. If you walk every single day and you stay active, you're done. Like that's what you that's that's what you have. Yeah. Now if you want a little bit more endurance, you can definitely get that through programming your resistance training in a way that you're going to aim for resi- for endurance like like we said with circuits or you can do some cardio. The way that I have people program cardio in their maps programs is typically first I tell them just to increase their their knee their you know non exercise uh, you know activity, activity. Thermo- thermogenesis just being active mm-hmm. um, and then if they want to add cardio I'll tell them you know no problem thirty minutes three days a week just if you enjoy doing it for your health get on uh, a machine and go for it or go outside um, and that's pretty much it if you want to improve yeah that's just scheduled activity yeah you know that's all cardio is like it weights uh, to me feels like a lot more specific, like to, you know, I have totally different ways to adapt, you know, to these types of, um, loads that I'm placing on my body and my joints. And so, um, there's just so much benefit to that, you know, when I'm going to, to grab something, lift something like, you know, do strenuous activity. Like I want to be strong, you know, and that's, that's like always been a, uh, mm. something as, you know, an adaptation that I need to, to maintain and, and to keep that going into, you know, as I get older, especially, Right? Well, I, I feel like people are always finding like different ways to ask us questions about cardio because yeah, yeah, they, they, they want it so bad. Right? 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 And, and I feel uh, like uh, there's so, nothing wrong with doing it. No, exactly. Uh, no, so, this is what I want to state is yeah. that, listen, uh, none of us here. Are, and I joke about saying, you know, no, no cardio or I don't do cardio. Team I'm no aller- sweat. Aller- yeah, right. team no sweat. Yeah. I'm allergic to it. Blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, like if it's something you enjoy and you love and it helps you stay in shape and healthy, I'm not knocking that on somebody i'm what i'm talking to is is our experience and all the people that we've trained and i'm looking at as a whole the relationship that most people have with with cardio and training that way is is not a healthy one and they don't fully understand one how to use it properly and then two how to really maximize it for their purpose and their goal not your fat burning go-to yeah exactly it's and you know when when it's if your goal is to you know burn fat stay in shape there's a, a much better way about it and a better strategy if that's the case and I, I'm more in that like okay let me show you and teach you that and then you can you can play with it how you want but if you're somebody who really enjoys just getting on a treadmill and running or taking off for a run and that's your thing and you don't have a lot of imbalances and it's not causing pain in your body to do that, then by all means, fucking run. Yeah, here's a, I made this statement uh, on another podcast and I want to say it again because I want to hammer it home, okay? Uh, every extra amount or every all the extra time that you devote to cardio uh, that's above and beyond improving your health, just cardiovascular health. So now I'm pushing my cardio. I'm pushing it a little bit. Every single bit of that is telling your body to become more efficient with activity and calories, a.k.a. slow down your metabolism. Mm -hmm. So the more cardio you apply that's beyond just your overall health, which you don't need much for overall health, the more you apply, the the more your body is going to try to become more efficient by slowing its metabolism down. So if you're a six days a week, you know, 45 minutes of cardio, an hour of cardio a day person – you are telling your body very loudly, hey man, slow down your metabolism, become more efficient because you're burning all these calories manually so that I can become better at doing the 60 minutes of cardio uh, every single day. And that's, you know, again, if you just love doing it, go for it. It's great. There's health benefits to moving all the time also. Mm-hmm. But if you won't, you don't, you know, you may find yourself in a situation where now you're stuck having to do that. And you, as soon as you, you know, you go on a vacation for two weeks, you don't stop doing that cardio and boom, you gain a bunch of weight because your metabolism has uh, adapted in that direction. So that's really that's really why one of the main reasons why resistance training, why we think it's so superior because the problems with the modern lifestyle have to do with overconsumption and uh, not burning enough calories and resistance training keeps your metabolism fast or at least tells your body it's okay to burn more calories because we need muscle. So it just directly combats modern health problems. Cardio, definitely a part of health definitely good for you, but you overdo it 
and you're you're kind of pushing putting yourself down. I in mean, the hole. you get you get more than enough when you get through phase four of Map Screen for sure. I mean, and then the, the fall the end of the question was how would we incorporate this into Maps program? This is what I would do if I had all the Maps programs, which is a year's worth of personal training, all program and lined out for me. And it's ideal for you to cycle through all of them, right? If if we're looking for overall health, being in shape, performance, everything, just it's overall, there. it's there, right? That's do not deviate, follow it from point A, point B, all the way through with whatever little modifications that you like to do for exercises, things here and there. But for the most part, you're sticking to it to a T. And then I'm going to use my cardio based off of the events throughout the year. So let's say, guess what? In four weeks, I'm going to Vegas. So you know what? I'm going to add some cardio into my life for the next four weeks. And I'm going to do it strategically. So I'm not going to go balls to the wall the first week. I'm going to do two or three days of the week. I'm going to add some cardio in there in addition to everything else I was already doing. And then the next week, I'm going to add a little bit more and then maybe pick up my intensity the next week after that. Maybe add a little bit more and intensity the week after that. And then guess what? I'm there. Now I'm in Vegas and I'm in the best shape. And, And because I added it like that, my body responded and it changed and it got me in better shape just sticking to everything else that I was doing just by adding it to help lean me out or get me in shape like that or let's say I'm you know now it's October the um, Spartan championship races and I'm into obstacle course racing and I said you know what fucking sign me up to obstacle course racing I don't care to win I just want to do it with my buddies I still care more about my muscle building program I'm going through right now I'm going to incorporate a cardio program to help, you know, train me for getting ready for that, which is I'm going to over probably a nine week or so Mm -hmm. intermittently. Build up your conditioning. Yeah, Yeah, it's all scheduled out. And I think it's great to have that, you know, applied to your programming as long as there's a specific goal in mind. And you have a healthy mentality towards it, like you're you're phasing it in and you're, you know, you just really like to include, um, you know, having that. That sort of what a lot of people call in shape kind of feeling, right? Because you feel like you can endure, um, you know, some of these workouts even better and uh, you just have more stamina. But, um, you know, that's that's up to you. You know, that's something that, uh, you know, it's a feel thing, but definitely it's not the fat burning mechanism. It's not Mm -hmm. the, you know, the the go to like I have to accomplish, you know, my treadmill work every single day like that. that, That's a mentality that we're trying to combat uh, with our message. Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to go- getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Next question is from ACOM. What advice would you give a very busy college student who can't find time to work out and eat healthy? Oh, I love this question. <laughs> I wish you could see the face I was making when I heard, it, when I heard that question. But so, you're still eating though, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, uh, I get to see what your Instagram page looks like. And uh, you have, let's see, a thousand followers and tons, tons of time spent posting selfies you know the average (laughs) oh snap the average person uh especially in this age group spends hours a day on social media hours a day um this you know when i hear people say to me the average is two and a half to four hours when i yeah so when i hear people say to me like I don't have day? I don't shit. have time 2.5 to 4 hours every day, day. That is every single such day a waste. on average what a waste. waste when I hear people say I don't have the time to like work out and eat, you know eat healthy I have look I've been in fitness for 20 years I've never met anybody ever who legit legit does not have time to uh make uh you know to to place health as a priority uh and again it's not about finding time it's about making time. You can make time. Uh, call busy college student. You have more time. Typically, you have more available time to you now than you will when you're 35, married with kids, and working. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Well, if you, if you find it hard to fucking work out and eat right now, it ain't gonna happen. Here's later on. here's what I okay. And then Sal's beating you up. I'm it's probably gonna sound like I'm beating you up here too. So. But I don't. I don't mean to. I you're gonna be the nice guy. I well, you can't do it. I, well, you can't here's do it, I, tra- I have trained. <laughs> he thought about it, and then he's like, "Nah, you know, <laughs> I gotta go back to my comfort zone." Yeah, <laughs> I've trained a lot, a lot of uh, 
20 to 25 year old cute college girls. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it happens to be my wheelhouse. Law, law of attraction. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. So that's just, is, I, that, is that what it says on your website? Yeah, that's what it says. Specializing, <laughs> yeah, specializing in 20 to 20 year old sorority, 20 girl. to 25 year old sorority girls. Cute. Yeah. Primarily cheerleader. So I, I mean, I'm I'm assuming she's somewhere in that age. She's a very pretty girl, and she's in pretty good shape already. And um, and this is the conversation that I normally have. With, it's along the lines of where Sal was just going right now. Is that listen? Uh, it's we all and and you if you have pretty good genetics and you're cute, you can get by all the way till about 26 years old. So and, and science at that <laughs> there's a lot of science. The there. pin just dropped <laughs> yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> From twenty to two, because you have good genetics, because you're pretty, you're good looking. You can drink on weekends. You can occasionally go for a run or exercise every now and then, or dance a lot at the club. Okay. Like all these things, burns just do lot. Pilates like once, yeah. and you can maintain a decent physique where you have no problem attracting the opposite sex whatsoever, and you're having a good time. And you know you should probably work out because everyone's telling you that. You like this mind pump podcast? These guys tell you to work out. But eh, it's not really a priority. So, which is that's fine because two each their own. I mean, if you if if college time party have fun is the priority and that's all you care about, that's okay. But if you're asking a question on here and you really want to get in shape and you want to eat healthy and you want to do, then you'll fucking do it and you'll make it a priority. And it's okay if you do and it's okay if you don't. But I will tell you this: that th- and this will happen if you do not. Uh, learn and you don't put like some practice or put some sort of regimen together on what it takes to get you in whatever the best shape of your life looks like and you don't know what it takes and you've because you've never put yourself through that and you don't do you don't start exploring that until you get to the age that Sal's saying which is this is very common we've dealt with I've dealt with hundreds of these where you know a, a, a woman hires me at 32 to 35 years old and she's been married, and she's had three kids now. I've had a lot of and those. And now, <laughs> yeah, that's your real house. And now she is. I get the guilt. Now she's finally starting to take time for herself, and that's literally what they say. They say that, like, you know, I'm married and kids, and you know, finally I want to make time for myself, and here I am to hire you. My job helping her out is way harder than helping somebody out who is who has learned all this, has put themselves in good shape, and has done this before in their early 20s. So they get it, they know what it takes, and they know what they need to do for their body than somebody who has hammered their body, let it go to shit because they're eating like shit. They're never, they're, they're never drinking, they're, partying. They're, all yeah, they're, and then if they've let it because that shit's compounding. I'll tell you, I'll, and I'll, it gets I'll, 10 times harder, like what Sal was saying. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, Maybe you have, maybe she has the uh, misperception that you need to work out seven days a week for an hour and a half. Because sometimes people say I don't have time, and they, and I think in their mind they think they need to have like they need to work out every day and just just live this lifestyle. Yeah, that does sound like a lot, right? You don't actually. You don't need to do all that. You, you, a few days a week is all you need. Here's what I'm gonna do because I was mean to you earlier. So what I'm gonna do. If you listen to this episode. DM me and I'll hook you up with Maps Anywhere. Maps Anywhere, uh, we designed to be with no, to, you do the whole program without any equipment. You don't need to go to a gym. You can do it in your, your, your dorm room. You can do it wherever. Um, it's, it's three foundational work or two foundational workouts a, a week. And then there's AM sessions that you can throw in whenever you want. You'll get phenomenal results on it. And it's not going to require hours and hours and hours of dedicated working out it's just expertly programmed and you just yeah. just that's it i'll hook you up so just dm me and that's it because that that program is literally the one that we designed specifically for people who you know legitimately are like look I, I, it's hard for me to drive to the gym or i can't drive to the gym because i got to take care of this or and it's like here you go here's a program that yeah. is going to give it's you gonna maximize your efficiency and, and structure it in a way where if time is an issue you know we can we can get more effective uh you know with what kind of time we have to give so if you can't really necessarily drop things in, in replacement of it let's just get uh you know more effective with what you're doing that's it and and for me personally like i have a, a very very busy life 
and I schedule my workout first thing in, in the morning. I just do it that way. And it ain't my favorite time to work it's out. It's just not a priority. When I this con like I said, I've had this conversation so many times. It's like it's yeah. just not a priority right now. Yeah. It's and I get it. It's an, you're at you're twenty to twenty five years old, you're going to college. But like they know that you should be eating better, right. right? Because yeah, like people are thing. saying it, whatever, yeah. and it's like but it's and the unfortunate part, and the, you want to get real deep here. This is where you know we talk about your relationship with your yourself and the difference between self image and body image. Like, you know, this is a lot of times if you don't figure all that piece out, and then you wait until you're you feel disgusted about your body or you're unhappy or whatever it may be. This is like a snowball effect of like this emotional roller coaster that becomes this huge task for me, the trainer, to help fix all that because you've done all this emotional damage, beating yourself up over years because you didn't take care of it when you knew you should have. So, you know, learn it, figure it out right now for yourself, whether you apply it all the time or not, that's up to you. But, you know, you take someone like yourself and I, I, I would challenge you to give three months, three months of your life of following, you know, a program right eating correctly follow a regimen make a priority for it doesn't have to be overwhelming like sal saying two days maybe three days a week follow it stick to it and then when and then after that like then it's up to you when you implement it how much of it you do and how much you enjoy yourself i think that that will pay off so big for you down the down the road the wizard has spoken uh check this out we have videos that we post every single day on youtube just look up Mind Pump TV. It's our YouTube channel, and it's fucking awesome. It's epic. You can also get 30 days of coaching from me, Adam, and Justin for free. Just go to mindpumpmedia.com and register your name. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>